After a humble beginning, Reba McIntyre rose to country music superstardom, and her career is about to have a full circle moment with one of the biggest gigs on the planet. Reba Nell McIntyre was born on March 28, 1955, in McAllister, Oklahoma, the third child of Clark, a world champion steer roper, and Jacqueline, an aspiring country singer turned school teacher. As she recalled to the Washington Post in 2018, I was the third of four kids. I wasn't a boy. I wasn't the youngest or the oldest. I was in the middle. I had to fight for attention. That humble beginning clearly shaped the woman that McIntyre would become. She had no arrogant belief that her voice was better than anyone else's. Instead, she was convinced that she just wanted it more and was willing to sacrifice more to get it. During McIntyre's childhood, she grew up on an 8,000-acre ranch, and she was heavily influenced by the rodeo lifestyle. Her father, Clark, took the title of world champion steer roper several years in a row in the late 50s and early 60s. Reba herself would go on to compete as a barrel racer until she turned 21. At the same time, she was also performing at local rodeos and clubs with her brother, Paik, and younger sister, Susie, as the singing McIntyres. In December 1974, a 19-year-old Reba McIntyre was on break from Southeastern Oklahoma State University, where she was majoring in elementary education. She took to the stage at the National Rodeo to perform the national anthem. In the crowd that day was singer-songwriter Red Stiegel, who offered to pay for a recording session in Nashville for McIntyre in the hopes of landing her a recording contract. Reba, would you join me? Sure enough, one year later, McIntyre signed with Mercury Records. Then in 1976, she married Charlie Battles, a rodeo star who was a decade older than her, although they divorced 11 years later. As she recalled to Parade in 2001, I married a rodeo cowboy very much like Daddy. I don't know why I stayed with him. Charlie tried to control me. Some men try to brainwash their women into thinking that no other man would ever want them. By the mid-1980s, Reba McIntyre was really starting to enjoy some industry recognition. Beginning in 1984, she won Top Female Vocalist three years in a row at the Academy of Country Music Awards. Then, in 1987, she won the first Grammy of her career in the category of Best Female Country Vocal Performance for the song Whoever's in New England. The tune clearly struck a chord with country music fans, as it became McIntyre's fifth number one country single. It managed to linger on the country charts for a very respectable 23 weeks. The album that it was on, also titled Whoever's in New England, hit number one as well, as did the second single, Little Rock. It was McIntyre's 10th album, and by far her most successful, as it attained platinum status in 1993. Whoever's in New England was a big departure from the typical twang of most country music at the time. It was initially recorded by a man, but McIntyre took it in a different direction, making it a haunting tale of a husband on the verge of cheating and his faithful wife who's willing to forgive any indiscretion. By 1989, Reba McIntyre had become a bit of a household name among country music lovers. She'd also been divorced from her first husband, Charlie Battles, for two years at that point. And that also ended up being the year that she married husband number two, her manager Narvel Blackstock. McIntyre then became a stepmother to Blackstock's three children, and she's never regretted it. She developed such a close bond with the kids that feels more like it's biological. In 2021, she told Entertainment Tonight, "'My stepson Brandon's been my son forever, it seems. Although he's my stepson, I still love him like he's my total, my blood.'" McIntyre and Blackstock eventually divorced in 2015, though she's managed to remain close with the kids. In 1990, Reba McIntyre and Narvel Blackstock welcomed their son Shelby into the world. She was 35 at the time and at the height of her professional success. Looking back in 2022, she told People magazine, "'Shelby is a gift from God to me. We're very close. I was a very self-centered person to a degree before Shelby. But then there's a little character who you are given the job to protect and nurture and love and teach. So all the attention's not on you anymore." I have raised Shelby a lot of the same ways Mama has raised us kids and shown lots of love, but lots of discipline. Shelby Blackstock would grow up to become a successful race car driver and then a business development manager. Along with his wife, Marissa, he's a pet parent to two dogs, Belle and Watson. On the occasion of his mom's 64th birthday in 2019, he posted a tribute to her on Instagram that read, "'Happy birthday to the number one mom. Looking forward to celebrating with you this weekend. I love you very much.'" On March 16, 1991, a plane chartered for eight members of Reba McIntyre's band and crew crashed in the Otai Mountain Wilderness in San Diego County, California. The flight was headed to Fort Wayne, Indiana, when the tip of a wing clipped a rock on the side of Otai Mountain due to poor visibility. Everyone on board tragically died. Later that year, McIntyre released the album called For My Broken Heart and dedicated it to everyone who was lost in the plane crash. She looked back on this dark chapter during a 2012 episode of Oprah's Masterclass. I don't guess it ever quits hurting. 
The early 2000s were a time of change for Reba McIntyre, including a brand new hairstyle. Gone were the mile-high curly locks, and in their place was a much more close-cropped do, though she actually kept that makeover a secret for months. Her hair was short in 2001 when she starred as sharpshooter Annie Oakley in her first Broadway musical, Annie Get Your Gun, though she wore wigs to hide it. Critics raved about this new star of the stage, and casting director Stuart Howard told Playbill, "...it's one of the best musical comedy performances I've seen in my life. I'd rank it with Carol Channing in Hello, Dolly! and Barbara Streisand in Funny Girl." The New York Times also gave McIntyre high marks, while Variety compared her to comedy legends Lucille Ball and Carol Burnett. 2001 was also the year that the sitcom Reba began airing on the WB, one of the forerunners of the CW. It starred McIntyre as a newly single mom, trying to navigate life with three children, a goofy ex-husband, and his clueless but well-meaning new wife. The show lasted for six seasons, as it presented the exploits of a blended family trying to master the art of getting along without strangling each other in the process. Reba attracted a unique assortment of guest stars, including country music legend Dolly Parton, who played Reba's ruthless real estate agent boss. It also attracted millions of loyal viewers and plenty of critical acclaim. McIntyre won the People's Choice Award for Favorite Female Performer in a New Television Series in 2002, and the series won the Young Artist Award for Best Family Television Series in 2005. In 2020, Reba McIntyre reconnected with a longtime pal, actor Rex Lynn. He's had notable roles on such TV shows as CSI Miami and Young Sheldon, and he's also a former bank manager from Oklahoma. He and McIntyre first met back in 1991 on the set of the TV movie The Gambler Returns, The Luck of the Draw. They stayed in touch over the years and eventually became romantically involved. Despite this development, that doesn't mean that McIntyre is quite ready to say I do once again. Still, that hasn't stopped her fans from speculating about the possibility of an imminent wedding. In 2023, the singer caused a stir when she showed up to a press event for The Voice with a diamond on her left hand. Alas, it wasn't an engagement ring, although she seemed to get a kick out of the gossip. Even though McIntyre and Lynn aren't currently engaged as of early 2024, she's still open to the idea of marriage. As she revealed during a 2023 appearance on Watch What Happens Live, I've oh. been married twice, he's never been married, so if he wants to, that's totally up to him. In the meantime, McIntyre appears to be focused on enjoying life day by day. As she told People magazine in December 2023, "...my professional plans would be to continue doing what I love to do. Say no to the things that won't be fun. Say yes to the things that will be. Personal is to have fun. Just continue being happy and healthy." Though Reba McIntyre seems to be enjoying her private life more than ever, there are no signs that she's contemplating retirement anytime soon. In the fall of 2023, she signed on to be a coach for season 24 of the reality competition singing series The Voice. She replaced her old friend Blake Shelton, who stepped away at the end of the previous season. And in October of the same year, she released a new album called Not That Fancy, which features acoustic versions of some of her biggest hits. The album was released alongside a book of the same name. Not That Fancy, Simple Lessons on Living, Loving, Eating, and Dusting Off Your Boot is a collection of photographs, recipes, and wisdom from McIntyre's life that also includes a foreword from fellow country music legend Garth Brooks. As McIntyre explains in the book, "...everything I'm doing in my life from here on out, personal or professional, doesn't matter, I'm going to have fun." The things that I learned the hard way along the way, I'm very glad to share with you. Five decades after being discovered while singing the national anthem at a rodeo, Reba McIntyre's career is coming full circle. In January 2024, she was selected to perform the Star Spangled Banner in Las Vegas to kick off Super Bowl 58. The NFL broke the news on Instagram, and McIntyre quickly chimed in to share her excitement, as she announced, "...I'm honored to be a part of something as big and historic as the Super Bowl coming to Las Vegas for the first time." The NFL also revealed that McIntyre would share the stage with Post Malone, who will sing America the Beautiful, and Andra Day, who will handle the vocals for Lift Every Voice and Sing. McIntyre stopped by CBS Mornings to share her thoughts about the upcoming gig. She revealed that the NFL reached out to her through her manager, though she was initially hesitant. As she put it, "...I said, oh my gosh, well, let me think about that." And Rex Lynn, my boyfriend, who's a huge football fan, said, "...yes, she'll do it, absolutely." McIntyre also explained how she's planning on preparing by revealing, "...you just warm up like you do a concert. You sing it about five or six times and get in there and do it." In January 2024, NBC ordered a pilot for a new comedy series starring Reba McIntyre. According to the logline, she plays a woman who inherits her father's restaurant and is less than thrilled to discover that she has a new business partner and the half-sister she never knew she had. In addition to playing the main character, McIntyre will also serve as an executive producer. As of February 2024, the show doesn't have a title, and no additional cast members have been announced yet. However, NBC did reveal that the producers of the Reba sitcom will join the project. If the pilot 
succeeds and the show moves forward, viewers will once again have the great pleasure of basking in a spectacle of red hair and southern charm. This obviously isn't McIntyre's first foray into acting. In addition to her six-season stint on Reba, she also starred on the short-lived ABC sitcom Malibu Country from 2012 to 2013. She's also had gigs on the shows Young Sheldon and Big Sky, as well as the 1990 horror comedy Tremors. After five decades in the entertainment industry, McIntyre is showing no signs of slowing down anytime soon.